Good morning, I'm Tommaso Menzani and I am the chairman of Group 2. Our work was based on a five inline cylinder engine and this one is our group composition. So these are the roles that we adopted developing the project and we also decided to make up a new role, the accuracy and qualify control verifier that was done by Lorenzo Barbi. Uh, so the first thing we were asked to do was to develop a suitable model for to study the problem. So and we found a precise engine. So we had to find. We were asked to find uh, an existing engine, and we found the TFSI engine of the that, for example, is the engine is the engine that it keeps the Aldi RS three. So we use the data sheet of this precise engine, and as it can be seen in the slide here, we also found the um, torque and power curve of this precise engine. So we also had from the Audi data sheet, we had all the precise numerical values of the main components of the engine. And one of the first steps in developing the project was to draw was that we drew the engine using SOLIDWORKS and we have here three views of that. And this proved to be very, very important because we found the center of mass based on the precise drawing on SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS was also very useful, proved to be essential because we got the moments of inertia of the engine, these metrics that would prove to be very important uh, in the following the further steps when we had to calculate the kinetic energy. The second thing we were asked to do was to identify the forces acting on the engine. And to do that, we used this formula here that has three terms. The first one, a first order component, a second order component, and a fourth order component. And it is very important to note that all the forces act in the z direction so they are vertical forces with respect to the place located and uh, we couldn't neglect the fourth order component because the ratio between r and l was higher than 0 0.3 so we considered that in order to be as precise as accurate as we could and the the form of these forces can be seen here in this graph. So we put the numbers, the precise number inside the formula, and we calculate the exact values. Furthermore, we used a, a MATLAB program to develop to sum the five forcing, one force acting on each um, cylinder. And we found out that the inertia forces are balanced for each position of the crankshaft. We did the exact same thing for the torques, the moment of inertia. We used this formula, first, second, third order component. In this slide here can be seen the how they acted, a general overview of these inertial torques. We put the numbers inside the formula and once again we used MATLAB to sum them. And this time we found out a very interesting thing that the inertia momenta were not balanced. We had a pitching moment, so a rotation around the y the y axis, which proved to be the main cause of motion, cause of vibration in our precise engine. The third fundamental step of this work was to find the natural frequencies and the mode shapes. And to do so, since the engine modeled as we modeled that so as a six degree of freedom rigid body three displacements and three rotation uh, it was a complex case so the ordinary second newton's law couldn't be used so we use the lagrange approach which is a energy method in therefore we had to calculate the kinetic energy and we did that with this formula here and we also had to calculate the potential energy and it was a very complex calculation so we did we did it in a slightly different way we firstly found out the value of the x component then the y component and then the z component and summed the three Afterwards, we, we use the, the Lagrange formula and we obtain the equations of motion in this 
way in the matrix form. It is fundamental in particular to notice, notice two things. First of all, the form that the forcing values has. So it is a it is a vector in which all the components are zero with the exception of this component here, which is the pitching moment, the aforementioned pitching moment. So that causes a rotation around the y-axis. The, se the second very important thing is to notice that how complex the stiffness matrix is. So we had to, in order to develop precise calculation, we had to find a way to simplify it. So we did two fundamental assumptions. The first assumption was to assume that all the springs in one direction had the same value. So the four springs in the x direction had the same values, There's all the springs in the y direction had the same values and the same thing for the z direction. Second thing we had to find, we found a precise value in literature that we assumed the stiffness in the x direction had and according to that since the engine tends to be moved more in the x and z direction we assumed we estimated two reasonable values for the stiffness values in the y and z direction so finally we had our two stiffness and inertia matrix and as it can be seen here they proved to be the reasonable matrices since they had positive diagonal elements, and they both are symmetric. After that, we calculated the natural frequencies of the mode shapes. And as we know, the natural frequencies can be calculated using this formula. So it is the determinant of this particular matrix here. So we first of all, we found, we solved the equation using MATLAB using the EIG function, so EIG function MATLAB. And after that, using this equation here, putting precise value of its natural frequency, we found the associated mode shape. So the six eigenvalues are the six natural frequencies of our system, since it was a six degree of freedom system. And uh, this one is the mode shape matrix. Each column of this matrix is a precise mode shape associated to each eigenvalue, so to each natural frequency. So after that, we have to put the calculation were not over because we had to consider the damping because it was a real case. So we had to consider the damping and we use the Rayleigh approach. So we assume the damping matrix was proportional, was a linear combination of the mass and stiffness matrix with a coefficient alpha and beta. And it was a very complex problem because it was um, uh, over-determined problem. So we had two unknowns, alpha, beta, six equations. And we you, we solved that using MATLAB, using the least square method. And finally, we obtained the damping matrix. Once again, it had positive diagonal elements and it is symmetric. So afterwards, we had to solve, we had the, finally, we had the equations of motion in this form here so we were ready to solve them and to solve them we use the model analysis approach so we did a change of coordinates we transferred we started from physical coordinates so space as a function of time and we had we get we got um model coordinates we don't have physical meaning they're just functional with the where the way we solve them and x is the matrix of mode shapes and we finally using matlab normalized here so the one displayed before it was earlier it was the matrix of mode shapes not normalized this version here is finally normalized so after that we had six equations of one degree of freedom system and each of them could be solved using the convolution integral we did that using MATLAB using the conv function c o n v function so and thanks to that thanks to the convol thanks to the convolution integral we found the value of zeta so the molar coordinates and from zeta to q we passed from frequency to time domain and we finally got the solution of the equations of motion so in these slides here the main step some bits of our math code matlab code are presented but i think i already mentioned more or less all the more important things about this matlab code The important thing is to show the results. The, in this session, there are two different types of results, transient results and steady state, steady state results. In this section here, we present, we want to show the steady state 
the transient result. So the speed ramp from zero to 6,500 RPM. So the whole range of speeds. And we assume that happened, that occurred in roughly 10 seconds. So as it can be seen here in this picture here, the pitch, the pitching moment grows, has higher values from zero to 10 seconds. And so we studied as a response to this action here from zero to 10 seconds, what is the response of the center of mass, the displacement of the center of mass. So we had an X displacement and a pitch angle. So out of the initial six degrees of freedom, only two were relevant. The other four were not relevant, were not high enough to be considered. The displacement on shore are shown here. And this is a zoom in order to show better the, the exact behavior that these functions have. After that, we got the response, the center of mass in terms of velocity and acceleration in these 10 seconds of transient. And then finally, we had to compute the force, forces acting on each mounting point of the four mounting, the base points of the engine. And to do, to do so, firstly, we had to evaluate the vertices displacement and from the vertices displacement for example a b c d vertex we got the display we got the force in a b c and d mounting point <clears throat> after that we had we show now the results in steady state condition so we had to select we we're asked to select three different regimes very important ones and according to our precise engine according to audi data sheet the most relevant conditions, regimes, where the 6,500 RPM, 2,500 RPM, and 1,000 RPM. The 6,000 one <coughs> is shown here, and it was relevant because it's the, the point in which the maximum power is reached by our engine. The time history is shown here, and we, for the first time, we have the spectra here, and we calculated them using the FFT function of MATLAB, so the Fourier transfer of MATLAB. And as it can be seen, these spectra are symmetric with respect to the vertical axis. The second very interesting regime is the idle, so a thousand RPM, as I already mentioned, and exactly as I showed earlier, we have the time history here and the spectra with this symmetry, as I already mentioned, in the right part of the slide. The third and last regime of interest was 2,500, in which the maximum torque is reached. And once again, we have in the left part of the slide the time history and the right part the spectra. One last thing is that in the beyond section, we asked ourselves what could happen if we wanted to change the material from which the engine was made. So we assumed to use aluminium instead of cast iron, which is the official material in the engine data sheet that we found, so the material in which the engine is built in the reality. So we assumed to use this particular aluminium alloy, so a series 7000, and of course something changed. What does it change? So it changed the average weight of the engine, so it is considerably uh, less heavy, minus 23 kilograms. But the most important things in terms of vibration, so we did again all the calculation and we found out that the vibrations are way more harsh if we use aluminum instead of cast iron. Cast iron is known for very good damping capabilities. In this case, you can, using aluminum, the displacement values are upward to one centimeter, which is a very high values. So cast iron block remains definitely the better solution. Audi made a very accurate choice in doing so. So these are the main conclusions that summarize the key points of our work. I think I already mentioned more or less all of them. And probably a very interesting thing is to show that the presence of vibration in a five inline cylinder is related to the three moments of first and second order. These are the main references, the five ones are the main references we use in developing our work. And this is, a, this is the end of this presentation. Thank you so much for your attention.